here are five stupid things about the case for Christ. Wait. No, it's the other one. Oh my god. Uh, okay, um... Oh god. Alright, I'm gonna need to read this one. Um, so the following comments, the thing I always say, so you know that I won't, that I didn't make it up myself, it's real stuff people say from the newspaper. Uh, Herald Mail from March 5th to March 16th, 2012, and if you don't believe me, you can read it at the website. Okay. So, um... How was your St. Patrick's Day? First, from um, Hagerstown. All the Democrats want to do is tax, tax, tax. And all the Republicans want to do is the rich get richer. Nice choice for the rest of us. Well, all you... All you have to do is tax the rich, and it solves all the problems. Let me tell you something. The mail sure moves in mysterious ways. Today I received a letter from the Outer Banks area of North Carolina, postmarked February 13th. Today is February 21, and it just got to me at my Clear Spring address. Wonder why. You want to hear something fucked up? about the mail. On Valentine's Day, I sent my wife flowers. I went through 1-800-Flowers and she never got the flowers. Not only that, the flowers ended up being delivered to someplace in New Jersey. And before you think that I'm joining in, jumping on the bandwagon to shit all over the postal service, they were being delivered UPS. So to answer your question of I wonder why, which isn't really a question, but rather more of a statement, it's because the people who handled your package didn't know what the fuck they were doing. About the so-called cartoon on the opinion page, February 22, degrading the Catholic faith was downright ignorant and filled with mockery. No one's faith should be ridiculed and mocked. If you have the urge to mock someone, try looking in the mirror. Hancock. Okay, so we're not allowed to mock people's religion? Since when? Here's the thing. Everybody just needs to put on their big people pants and just learn to accept it when people make fun of you if you do something stupid. And if someone else does something stupid, then you just make fun of them. See, it's just called being a grown-up. You know, maybe some people would like to live in the kind of society where nobody ever says anything unkind about anybody ever. But that's not the kind of place I want to live. I'm sorry. Oh, man, that light is just killing me. In the news, this gay marriage law. I don't have a problem with that. I do, however, have a problem with them repeatedly showing women kissing women and men kissing men. Because my children are asking why they are doing that. And it's very difficult to explain to young children that. And I think the news is showing too much of it. And I just wish, if I wanted to see that, I'd let them watch shows that are on after 8 o'clock at night. Hagerstown. Maybe the reason why you're having so much trouble explaining women kissing women and men kissing men to your kids is because you're stupid and you're a terrible fucking parent. It's not that complicated, all right? You know why women kiss women and men kiss men? For the same reason that men kiss women and women kiss men. Because they like each other and they like to do it. Because they're in love. Because whatever you tell your fucking stupid ass kids who are asking these questions. I feel I should share at this point that I'm not entirely a hundred percent. 
Um, I blame Matt Matson. Um, I agree with the parent of three good children who would never ever let them go if they came home with a friend that was the same sex and wanted to be with them for the rest of their lives. I have four good children, but still would not condone a marriage between same-sex couples because it's God, it's against God's laws. However, they could still spend the rest of their lives together and I would love them anyway. I do approve of benefits for them, just not marriage. Okay, so you support your children's right to be gay, which is nice of you to do that because they don't really have a choice. Um, and you think they should have benefits as a gay couple, which is also nice, but you just don't think that they should be allowed to call it marriage. What you're doing is you're privileging heterosexuals and saying that only they should have the right to use the word marriage to describe their unions. And you're discriminating against same-sex couples and saying they don't have the right to use marriage to describe their union. So what you need to do is come up with a good reason for doing that. And if you do come up with such a reason, make sure that you share it with people because I've never ever 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 heard one and I would love to hear one. To put a sports stadium down in the front yard of those two residences, the towers of the disabled and the elderly, is beyond mean, cruel, and despicable. It's positively evil. We not only don't need a stadium, we don't need it down there, where those people have nowhere to go, no way to go to get away from the noise, the lights, and the fireworks. This just can't happen. It's just too bad. It's too positively evil. We don't do that in Hagerstown. We're a decent town. Yeah, decent towns don't have baseball stadiums. They're talking about, this is what they're getting all bent out of shape about. They're, they were thinking about building a new stadium for the Hagerstown Suns to try to entice them to stay in Hagerstown and not move to Winchester. Although that might all be completely over with now because Winchester just said a couple of days ago that they're not going to build a new ballpark for the Suns anyway. So maybe the Suns will end up staying no matter what. But the one of the possible plans was to build a new stadium for the Suns and put it right downtown, like right next to, actually right close to where the Herald Mail building is. And everybody always wants to bitch and complain about the fireworks and the noise. And here's the thing, what they, they seem to not realize is that you live in a city! You live in a city! There's like 50,000 people that live all around you. All right, you, you, it just doesn't make sense for you to complain about the noise. You live in a city. What the fuck? Oh my God. Is this like pinned to me? Is this like pinned to my fucking skin? Oh God. Leonard Pitts's recent article, The Limbaugh Rock, fails to be unbiased and ridiculously slanted and, as usual, to suggest to his readers that he is an authority and crusader of good versus evil. Pitts is a farce and a disservice to this paper. I don't recall him or any other bleeding-heart liberal denounced and call for an apology or shame Bill Maher, Keith Olbermann, or any of the other Obama-loving media leftists when they described Sarah Palin and other conservative women in far more vicious and foul language. Where were the great feminists then? Where are the apologies from these saints of the left for the vitriol they spew? Okay, you guys are getting all hung up on words, on the vocabulary that is being employed here, right? Rush Limbaugh called Sandra Fluke a slut and a prostitute. Bill Maher and Louis C.K. called Sarah Palin a cunt and a twat and other things too. Um, here's the difference. It's not the vocabulary. The point isn't that cunt is a meaner thing to say to somebody than slut. The point is, Bill Maher's comments, Louis C.K.'s comments, were directed specifically to Sarah Palin, who was a public figure, who was running for a national political office, who was relevant to our national conversation. All right, And she had done and said some very troubling things, like, I don't read. And Sandra Fluke was not running for any political office. All she had done, the sum total of her contribution to popular culture, was sitting in front of some members of Congress for a few minutes and saying that she thought it might be a good idea if contraception was covered 
in health insurance policies. That's what Sandra Fluke did. And, and as a result of that, Rush Limbaugh goes on the radio for three days and calls her a slut and a whore. And here's the key. If he has a problem with Sandra Fluke, just because she thinks that contraception should be covered in insurance policies, and he calls her a slut and a prostitute as a result, it's not that much of a stretch to extrapolate that Rush Limbaugh was saying that all women who believe that contraception should be a part of their health coverage that they pay for, by the way, not the taxpayers, that all of women, all women who feel that way ought to be characterized as sluts and prostitutes. See, you can take what Rush said and extrapolate it to all women who hold similar viewpoints, which is a lot of fucking women who have done nothing wrong. Sarah Palin, on the other hand, Bill Maher wasn't saying that all women are cunts. He wasn't even saying that all women politicians are cunts. He wasn't even saying that all women who have run for the vice presidency are cunts. I don't know how he feels about Geraldine Ferraro, but I'm pretty sure he's never called her a cunt. They're completely different. The fact that he, that Bill Maher called her a cunt and Rush called her a slut, the, the words are absolutely irrelevant. And, and if you're still hung up on the vocabulary, all it says to me is either you, you are a professional spin doctor who just wants to try and take some more of the heat off of Rush and put it on to Bill Maher, who lost a fucking TV show 10 years ago, by the way, because he said something about 9-11 that people didn't like. So please spare me this self-righteous, you know, a, a martyr complex conservative bullshit about how all oh, the left never has to suffer for things that they say. It's total horseshit, and they probably know it. If you're still hung up, on, on Mar saying cunt while Limbaugh only said slut, all that says to me is that you totally missed the fucking point of the conversation that you're trying to have. And maybe until you get the point, you should shut the fuck up and make room in the conversation for people who do get the point. Ah, that's all I'm saying. And finally, from Hagerstown, about the ballpark. Did they ever consider the two churches that are pretty close one across on South Potomac Street and one here on Summit Avenue. And don't forget, if they want to improve the ballpark, clear the trees out of Hager Park and everything and make ample parking. Hagerstown. Uh, I agree. I agree with you 100%. Tear down the churches and build the ballpark. Thanks for watching, everybody. I should put it over here. So.